what's up everybody welcome back to exotic gas logic again and today is another different video on a different topic many people were asking me that now that you have around 3000 subscribers probably <laughs> why don't you make a video on how you do consultations because many people have approached me for consultations and i have also done so many consultations in the past uh, one year of course i mean uh, after uh, i have i had started my channel in youtube so the first video i had put on 28th march last year and uh, the channel was started on 5th march all right so that's what i'm going to discuss in this video it will be a uh, not a very b a long video but i'll try to put it short all right so that is it from my side if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then wait watch this video and then you decide <laughs> all right and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you to understand do you need a consultation <laughs> all right so uh, many people had asked me that <clears throat> although uh, you have uh, given the details on your website but specifically we want to know about the first option which is there the a lifetime reading the full reading which is there so <clears throat> how do you do that what approach do you take yes and that's very good because if you uh, are wanting to share your life and your details then it's good if you uh, know uh, what you're going to get right so in that i uh, try to see your horoscope from various angles of astrological domains yes so for example i will use the north indian style because i don't know uh, how to see south indian charts so then when i get the report i will be seeing where are your prominent planets placed yes so yeah before that i would say uh, how the reading goes is if you have specific questions then i will make sure that i see the chart in that area yes so for example if you have questions pertaining to relationships or marriage then i will look to your seventh house venus and then how uh, how are other things playing out from the horoscope yes and if you have specific questions only pertaining to career then it's the 10th house the 6th house the second house nowadays many people have questions regarding child and uh, property purchase no sometimes fights court cases litigation so then you need to check the 4th house for property then mars then 6th house so uh, generally and this is how it happens because it doesn't happen that anybody calls me and says oh we give you this much money you just tell me about myself no it doesn't happen people generally have a lot of questions in that so the specifics i will not be going because those things are already mentioned in the website but what i will be saying here in this video is what approach do i use to see all those things yes so uh, suppose uh, somebody has asked me general questions yes general means they have not asked me to focus the entire 90 minutes or one hour on one specific area yes so some many people do like that not everybody but there are people who just say tell me about myself and tell me how i can improve myself yes so that is why i have named the first consultation the first reading as uh, life reading so it's not a astrological reading yes so because that's a life coaching basically so in that what do i do is i don't just see your horoscope i also talk to you about your life lifestyle your habits yes because ultimately there's no use of suggesting remedies if you can't do it right so for example if i see that there are some mantras you need to chant in the morning for example and i see that your lifestyle is terrible which means that you cannot get up in the morning then is there any use of suggesting mantras which you need to chant in the morning because you anyways can't do it so then what happens is you will do it in the beginning and then you don't do it and then you will mail me again that oh what you said is not happening because i am not able to do this please suggest me some other remedy some other mantra i want to book another consultation with you of course you can make me rich like that but the point is that my understanding of that reading which i give is once i give you that reading you 
should not need to go to any other astrologer or even come back to me should i repeat you should not have the requirement to come to me again or go to any other astrologer at least for those areas now if there is some emergency or some some specific new issue comes up then you then you can come to me that's or you can go to some other astrologer that's fine but i am saying for whichever problems i have detected in the horoscope for those things you should not come to me again because whatever i can give i give it in that reading itself yes because that that's why that's a very expensive reading because you you need to get it only once in a lifetime you don't need to get it again and again and again and again yes so in 90 minutes everything is summed up in that uh, but suppose i see that you can't do those things in the morning so then i say uh, try to see if there is any possibility that you can do them during the afternoon yes the mantras suppose you are a businessman or your schedule is not very demanding during the afternoon suppose then maybe i can suggest you those mantras which you can do then but suppose the mantras can only be done by you in the night yes so then i will not suggest you uh, those mantras which are to be done during the day yes then i will only suggest you the mantras which you need to do in the night because uh many people are having these issues yes so that's what happens you go and see a video on astrology somewhere oh you have this planet in this house you need to do this you need to do that but then there are no results why because people astrologers especially they will just give you readings but they will not go into your life yes so that's like cheating the person not exactly but that is Uh, in one way indirectly uh, unknowingly you are cheating the person because what's the use of giving things which the person cannot uh, follow right so before giving something it is very essential that we go into the lifestyle of the person and try to see if you can do that or not yes and then i uh, talk with them and i try to deliberate if at least something can be done in the morning like especially rishi mantras mantras of vyas dev those mantras are to be exclusively done in the morning yes and then mantras like mrityunjay or mantras for goddess durga those have to be done in the night especially and then there are mantras like uh, lord K- K- krishna's mantras then lord mantras for lord ram or for mars yes the narsimha dev's prayers those uh, can be done at any point of the day but preferably in the morning but these these can be done at any point of the day but there are specific mantras which you have to do in the morning or in the night so that's what i try to do i try to deliberate yes if yes some part of the mantras you can do what you can do at least this you do in the morning and the rest you do in the night yes even if those mantras for lord krishna or for ram or whatever whichever is allowed so then i can ensure that the person does not have to come back to me again ever 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 in this lifetime yes for those problems some other problem he or she might come to me and that's perfectly fine so my uh, my conception of that reading is that you don't have to uh, go to any other astrologer and if you feel the need that you have to go like for many people it happens they will go to 10 different astrologers and keeping keep getting 10 different readings well if you do that with me i will consider myself as a failure <laughs> i will think that god did not empower me <laughs> to help you or to uh, guide you properly you have simply wasted your time your money and your efforts and your hopes on me i am useless i am worthless i am totally good for nothing i will feel like that <laughs> so even if you get a reading that full 90 minutes reading from me and then you go to some other astrologer you can go i don't have any problem but at least don't mail me i'll feel very bad <laughs> not that i will get angry oh after i gave after i have given you the reading how can you go na you don't have faith on me no it's not that that's not the reason but my reason is that if at all you have uh, invested so much of your wealth on me then how could i not be able to help you? but i can't help it these days there are so many people who will approach me and then they will go to other astrologers also and sometimes they 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 would have already gone to 10 astrologers and then they come to me so if somebody has gone to 10 astrologers and then come to me then why they will not go to somebody else after me yes so 
uh, many times people want to hear something which 10 astrologers may not say yes so they'll come to me the 11th one and then they'll try to uh, hear oh is he going to tell that which i want to hear and suppose i also don't end up saying that then the person will be like no no no, no. i need to find somebody else yes so for example in india many people uh, ask me when uh, doing the consultation that can i become a ias officer yes so sometimes i see their charts and i honestly don't feel like that now whoever is destined to become those things will be there in the chart yes now i'm not going to go on detail of every profession that's not the video is all about here but suppose it is not there in your in your chart so to tell you that yes yes sir you will become uh, i think that's uh, not very good right because <laughs> anyways you will come to know one day that you didn't become yes but then should i only tell you that you will not become an is officer no that's foolishness i will tell you sir you can try to become an is officer or you can try to do this does it sound like somebody so i will tell you that okay if you want to try for is you can try during this time period during this dasha or this antar dasha it can happen or if it doesn't happen then you try this yes and then there are many questions people ask pertaining to business yeah and so another thing uh, i see is what the person is telling is it matching with the horoscope yes so for example if the person is telling me that i cannot get up in the morning somehow it is not possible yes so then i see what's the situation of the eighth house because the eighth lord because eighth house is the house of rejuvenation right is the house of death and rebirth so when you are sleeping what happens you are dying and then you're getting up basically so if the eighth lord is well placed it is in a good uh, dignity uh, uh, i mean uh, if it is in kendra or it's in trikon or it's in a good sign or it is in kendra to the lagnesh yes or even if it is in trines to the lagna lord and reasonably well placed then i have seen that these people can to some extent get up properly yes now that's not a universal rule i am not saying that the whole chart has to be seen but that is one example and the situation of the 12th lord because 12th lord shows the situation when you are sleeping so the 12th lord if it is in a similar uh, position like it is well placed or it is in kendra or in trikon or in a good sign or whatever you call it or it's in kendra to the lagna lord then also i have seen that these people can sleep good i mean they can go to sleep properly because what happens sometimes we see that we have given some big lofty remedies no? but they are not working even if the person is doing that in the morning or even if the person is doing it in the night it's still not working why because the rejuvenation is not proper yes so that is why i call that reading as life coaching because then i will also tell the person what you should do provided the 12th lord is well placed that means the person has the ability to sleep properly in the night due to some reason some some unwarranted reason which means there the, some, some reason which is very temporary because of some temporary reason the person is not able to sleep properly or if there are some small life changes done then the person will be able to sleep very properly yes so for example if the person is in the western countries and most of the consultations which i do the people are in the western countries only i mean they can be indians also but they live in the west most of the people uh, they i suggest them that you can take uh, one avocado with your dinner yes so avocados if you don't know what avocado is google it yes avocados are known as super foods and they have a lot of high magnesium so magnesium is the one which calms down yes it, it also helps in insulin resistance and there are tons of other benefits of avocados so that is something which you can take so if you take one avocado every day i have seen time and again like i am in germany here just before sleeping now i just had some cream and some avocado yes with some uh some liquid so it was so delicious my god so that is one simple change if you do then you get good sleep now that's not going to happen one uh, suddenly you do one day and that it's going to happen no it's not like that you have to do that for at least 15 days 20 days your body has to get acquainted with that avocado thing 
yes that thing you can do yes provided the 12th slot is well placed but but if the 12th slot is very badly smashed somewhere or is afflicted then the person can have difficulties in sleeping or if there are some serious malefics like saturn mars rahu or ketu in the 12th house yes so then uh, i understand there is not much use of suggesting those remedies and most of the times people have the difficult planets there so then uh, some other things some other mantras i might have to suggest yes so if the 12th lord is placed somewhere and then what about the 8th house so if the 8th lord is not well placed then i have to see uh, how to rectify that situation first and then i will go ahead with the chart yes so these two points are very crucial sleep and getting up these two points are very 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 crucial in a chart yes because they deal with the moksha trines yes so fourth house is the house of your heart and your heart will only be clean if your sleep is proper yes and your sleep is proper then that means the 12th house is proper so your 8th house will be good which means you will be able to get up properly in the morning yes if you feel that when you get up you feel very tired you feel like oh my god my body is crushing i can't do anything as soon as you get up in the morning or you feel feel, feel very down very low very depressed then there is some problem there in the 8th house yes or the 8th lord is been smashed or hemmed between malefics or whatever some issue is there so we have to treat those things first yes and then you check what is the situation of the lagna lord because the lagna lord will tell you the placement of the lagna lord will tell you what is the inherent disposition of the person towards houses yes so for example if the uh, lagna lord is placed in the 10th house and from the 10th house the houses 5 and 9 are not well placed yes the 5th house is 8th and the 9th house is 12th so these people i have seen naturally even if i suggest them remedies they will not do you can check any chart yes lagna lord in the 10th because 10th house is the house of your own karma so when the lagna lord is sitting there the person feels that i can do anything in my life by my own hands i'll change things now because of that i have seen in my experience or even if planets like sun is there in the 10th house then the person can uh, lack uh, i would not say the person lacks faith but the person may feel oh if there is some career issue i will solve it myself i don't need all these mantras because the 5th house is not well placed the 9th house is also not well placed so 9 is the house of god and 5 is the house of mantra so in that case i don't push or uh, i don't stress on mantras too much because i know anyways the person is not going to do yeah now suppose the lagna lord is in the 10th house yes and suppose sun is in the 9th house suppose or suppose lagna lord is in the 10th and moon is in the 5th house or suppose sun is in the 10th and then moon or the lagna lord is in 5th or 9th then what happens then this is a variegated energy yes that means one part of the person which is the lagna lord or the sun or the moon is telling i am in the 10th house i will do things myself but the other two counterparts are either in 5th or 9th houses then there is some other part of the person suppose the moon so then the mind is telling oh i can still do the mantras yes so that becomes a very beautiful combination yes so for example suppose somebody has sun in the 5th house and moon in the 9th house and the lagna lord in the 10th that's like fabulous combination to have or you if you interchange these positions yes so then i know the person will also do things himself or herself and also uh, do the mantras yes that's like the best thing that you can have yes uh, and now suppose i see that sun moon or the lagna lord all of them are either in 5 or 9 yes that means now the problem is the 10th house is not well placed from the 5th house so then then uh, this tendency can come that oh anyways keep chanting mantras whatever has to happen will happen you can't change it yes now that is also not healthy because you have to do your karma you have to do your karma mantras are not a substitute for karma yes so then if i see those things then i will give the mantras but my focus will be on telling the person that you have to change the karmas you have to change your lifestyle you have to change your habits only then things will improve because if i keep saying out mantras the person will be very happy oh yeah yeah, yeah. give me mantras i will do <laughs> so for example if 
uh, the person is uh, having some difficult karma pertaining to relationships yes so then i may suggest uh, different remedies yes pertaining to venus or suppose now the uh, the lagna lord is placed in the 10th house surya is also in the 10th house and moon is somewhere else yes so then what remedies do you suggest for venus that will be a different exercise in itself but suppose sun and moon are connected with the fifth or ninth houses or the lagna lord is connected to the fifth lord or the ninth lord then you can suggest mantras yes but in some cases you can't can't suggest because that thing may not play out so then there are some other uh, lifestyle changes which we need to suggest yes so for example if you see that uh, the person is having difficulty uh, with uh, marriage yes so then you see uh, what exactly is causing the issue yes so for example the seventh lord may be a problem now venus the natural karaka for marriage that can also be in trouble and most of the charts it always happens that some malefic is aspecting the seventh house or the seventh lord or it is aspecting venus yes so then or one of them is combust the seventh lord is combust or the natural karaka for marriage venus is combust so then you have to suggest remedies for that yes otherwise uh, the person will feel that some part of his relationship is good as vigdi kara came to my channel and i asked him if the karaka is smashed and the seventh house is well placed then vigdi kara said that there will be some areas where the person will be good and some areas where the person will be in trouble so we need to identify where is the problem yes and we have to also see positions from the moon for example if uh, suppose venus is well placed from the moon that means the person is emotionally wanting to stay connected with his spouse yes but suppose from the kendra it is in houses like 6 or 12 or 8 then uh, they can uh, encounter some difficulties then you also have to go to gemini concept yes you have to see arudha lagna the concept of arudha lagna then from there i check what's the situation of your dara karaka yes dara karaka is the planet with the least degree those are gemini concepts they i have not discussed anything about them about which i will discuss in the future videos so then i see if the arudha lagna and the dara karaka are supporting each other arudha lagna is what your illusory image your your per, uh, the way you are perceived in this world yes so if the dara karaka is in kendra or in trines to your arudha lagna that means your spouse which is signified by the planet with the least degree is supporting your image if it is in trines and if it is in kendra it is enhancing your image yes now if they are enemical planets there can be some challenges so we need to work out that but suppose the dara karaka is not well placed from your arudha lagna then it can happen that at times you have to make decisions on uh, do you want to do what you want to do or what your spouse says those things can happen at times so we need to see what's happening so suppose somebody is mars is dara karaka and then it is well placed from the arudha lagna yes so uh, let me give you an example suppose the arudha lagna is uh, in cancer suppose yes and then venus is in the sign of sagittarius which is the sixth house now yes and suppose venus is also uh, so not not venus suppose mars is in sagittarius yes and mars is the dara karak planet with the least degree that means the spouse is not supporting the upliftment of the uh, arudha lagna which is your image in this society but suppose venus is in the 10th house from kendra my god then what you do yes so then that means that you yeah, although the women will be very prominent in your workspace but necessarily they will not enhance your image ultimately when it comes to the highest fulfillment yes that can happen or you can say that women in general will enhance my image but dara karaka specifically specifically can refer to the spouse but when the dara karaka is not well placed from the arudha lagna that can at times mean that your spouse is acting as a barrier for your name and fame that can happen at times but if venus is in 10th from the kendra then it will mean that your spouse may not support but women in general will support but what if venus is debilitated there then you may meet women who are very difficult to deal with yes that's the meaning that is how you study the chart and suppose now your uh, moon uh, from from chandra kundli from the moon chart that same venus is placed in the 8th house yes so which means that 
your moon is in the third house yes and 10th house is uh, eighth yes from the third so that means mentally there is a lot of sexuality which is there because eighth house is the house of sexuality and having a rajasic planet there like venus that can show too much sexuality yes especially from the moon chart so now that means you have a lot of women at your workplace yes and if venus is in virgo then they will be very difficult to deal with because they will be very nitpicky about details and they will they will be seeing the narrow picture they will not be able to see the higher picture yes but you need them without them the 10th house will not function yes because they are very prominent for your career but suppose the dark araka is not well placed then your spouse may be like oh either me or that <laughs> yes so you need to check from various different angles that is why when somebody asks me oh my venus is in this house my mars is there i can't give you an answer because i do not know where your dharakaraka is i do not know where is your arudha lagna i do not know where is your ghatika lagna i do not know where is your indu lagna i do not know where is your shri lagna i don't know anything so giving a prediction on marriage yes just by seeing your venus is totally foolishness if somebody is doing like that Uh, well then astrology would be so easy right because venus stays in one sign for 20 uh, 20 25 days so whoever has venus in virgo everybody will be divorced or everybody will stay single well then astrology is so easy right chop it off no it's not like that you have to go to the divisional charts also the d7 chart the d9 chart the navamsha the saptamsha so then there are so many issues which come up which you have to try to see so this is about the rashi chart i said now when you go to the divisional charts about which i have i have not discussed but i will discuss about them very soon suppose in the in the rashi chart you have a good planet supposedly good planet suppose jupiter or venus in the 7th house and in the navamsha you have planets like saturn or rahu or mars or ketu or sun in the 7th house yes so then how do you study yes so those are the things that we you need to balance so you cannot say one thing and then you cannot just blindly give a prediction that oh it works for everybody yes so it doesn't work like that what if that so called benefic yes which is sitting in your 7th house is a ruler of a dusthana so for cancer ascendant if jupiter the 6th lord is sitting there in the 7th house it is not only debilitated it is also the 6th lord of celibacy so 6th lord in the 7th is never good for relationships yes it is better than 7th lord in the 6th <laughs> all right 6th lord in the 7th is bit better than having 7th lord placed in the 6th house but still it is the 6th lord right so then how do you see it's jupiter yes but then it's also the 6th lord and also it is debilitated so you have to see what's going on in the chart properly now the other things that you need i check is how much goodness is there in the chart yes what is the situation of the benefics in the chart if the benefics are getting smashed by the malefics that means the person will have lot of difficulty in maintaining the good things in life should i repeat if the benefics are getting smashed through conjunction or aspect by the malefics then it can mean that even if you take up something good it is difficult for you to maintain yes so especially if jupiter is afflicted in your chart yes nowadays they have made afflicted jupiter very good good have you seen in youtube channels recently uh, one person <laughs> emailed me a link of a video where the person uh, was telling in that video in youtube that oh afflicted jupiter is the best thing to have in kali yuga i will not take the name of the person but that person was uh, giving reasons why afflicted jupiter is good in kali yuga jupiter rahu is good in kali yuga and mars Ra- mars jupiter is good or anyways mars is a friend but saturn jupiter is good saturn jupiter can also have good ways but jupiter rahu there is lot of glamorization yes of this yoga these days so but the fact of the matter is i have seen in my experience now i am not going to jupiter rahu that i will explain in some other video but what i am saying here is if benefics are getting smashed by aspect or, conj- or by conjunction then even if i suggest remedies to the person is highly unlikely the person will do 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 it or continue it then you also check the placement of the lagna lord how strong is the lagna lord that will show his determination yes lagna lord shows ideals 
if the lagna lord is strong and all the other things are weak in the chart it can still happen that the person somehow do does the remedies yes then the person will still be able to overcome lots of effects and there are so many other things which happens sometimes i give readings to people and people say oh i can't do that like for recently i had suggested uh, just two days back i had suggested one lady to take card because of some reason and that lady said oh there are some health problems i can't take card suggest me something else so then i suggested something else so this is how you see it happen so it's not necessary that one thing acts for all yes so and the same thing i do regarding finances and marriage oh my god this has been a very long video i thought i'll make it short but it became very long all right so that is it from my side i try to analyze the chart from different angles and try to suggest what are the things which will be best for you and then i also try to suggest you which spiritual path will be good for you because those things will be, de be dependent on what planets are there in your fifth house where the fifth lord is placed how is the fifth lord placed with respect to the lagna lord that will show your disposition towards remedies yes and then what's the situation of the ninth house where is the ninth lord placed the placement of the ninth lord will tell you where you will find your guru because ninth lord shows the person right so if ninth lord is well connected with the lagna lord then that shows the moment you go to gurus your life will be like bang it will it will transform or if the ninth lord is in the lagna or the lagna lord is in the ninth if the lagna lord is in the ninth it is fabulous for you going and meeting a guru yes or if the ninth lord is in the lagna that shows that you can automatically meet the guru which means the guru comes to you somehow yes so those things are there and then you have to check what are the planets in the fifth house and if they are also been hemmed by malefics from the fourth or in the sixth yes so that is how uh, i go ahead with the consultations that is why i call that reading as the life coaching because i go into every area of your life yes not through horoscope i mean through personal uh, queries because then i can understand you better yes and that is how i decide which remedies to tell you and which remedies not to tell you all right so that is it from my side it has been a very long video so that's all i wanted to say it's a very detailed reading and it takes a long time for me to see everything it takes a long 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 time <laughs> and a lot of energy and a lot of sadhana i have to do so that i can give you the reading properly all right so that's what i wanted to say regarding the life reading which you probably need to take only once from me and not go to any other astrologer and it's not about money actually you may have money and you can spend but the question is if you have to go to 10 doctors yes for your own problem even if you are a millionaire how are you getting benefited sir so i don't want that to happen so if i come to know that somebody who had taken a consultation from me <clears throat> especially that life reading and then that person has gone to somebody else then i will be disappointed with myself <laughs> then i will feel that oh i could not help the person although if the person still wants to go that is his or her free will all right so i i don't mind that you go to somebody else also all right that is it from my side if you want a consultation then please approach me to my website and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you know somebody who wants to take a consultation from me then please uh, send uh, this link of this video to them and yeah now some of you may write in comments that oh you are marketing yourself you are trying to suck the money of others <laughs> you are trying to loot others you are trying to create fear by saying all these negative things now 8th house 12th house oh my goodness so much fear i am creating right <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 i want to be the king of the world come make me rich by paying me for the consultations yes that's what you want to hear yes that's my goal ultimately that is why i have opened this channel yes that's what you want to hear all right then if that is what you want to hear then so be it jaisa aapko theek lage okay wish you good night bye bye see you